In today's video, I'm going to be showing you on how you can use Zone Plus, a new, effective and useful way of handling zones inside of your Roblox game. So kind of like an alternative to Dot Touched, which definitely works a whole lot better. So as you can see here, you can create so many different things with Zone Plus, it's just an effective way of handling touch events inside of your game. So as you can see, it has so many different use cases here. As you can see, Super Smooth is very effective and works very well. So before we get started with this video, a massive shout out to Forever HD who's put a ton of effort into open source projects like this and once again another project like this, which is super duper cool. This video will only be covering the basics of it, so I will be leaving a link to the documentation down below, which will hopefully help you develop a stronger understanding and help you getting started with the plugin. So if we head over to the installation part of the documentation, you're going to see there's a couple of ways to install this. We're going to ignore method 3 as that's a little bit more for the professionals, and there's a couple of ways we can install it. The first way is to head over to Zone Plus Model, and we can get the model for ourselves, which you can do. Or you can download it from the latest release on GitHub, and you can also insert it to your game using the RBXM. I'm going to use the get model method and get it inside of my inventory. Now that I've got the model, I'm going to head over to Toolbox, then to Inventory, you're going to see my models, and there you're going to see Zone Plus. We can close out of Toolbox, and now you can see we have Zone here. Now this module can be used by both the server and the client, so we're going to put it inside of Replicated Storage. Now it's time to get started with a couple of basics. I'm going to create a part here, and I'm just going to make it a container, which is just like this. We're going to make a basic box here, and then I'm going to anchor it, and I'm going to set Cancolide to false so people can walk to it. I'm going to set the transparency like this. I'll make it a nice distinguishable color and add a highlight onto it. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how this tool works. So let's just use this from the server here. And we're going to create a brand new script inside of server. And we're going to import the module by saying local zone equals require game dot replicated storage colon wait for child zone. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable called touch part and we're going to say local touch part equals and then let's just give our touch part here in Explorer a better name. So I'm going to call it touch part red just like this and then we can initialize our variable with the path to this part by saying game dot workspace and then dot touch part red. And from here, we're going to register it as a new zone by saying local zone equals and then zone dot new. And then we're going to pass our touch part. So inside of this zone function, it takes one argument, which is the container. So a container can be any non-base part instance, such like as a model, a folder, or anything that contains descendant base parts. So it's also super useful if you have, for example, a folder like this, and you have many parts inside of it. So that just simplifies the process, which is also super useful and so cool. Also, it's useful to note that zones are dynamic. So this means if the part changes size or position, or if a base part is added to or removed from the zone group, then an internal update method will be called to recalculate its bounds, which is also super amazing. So I'm just gonna demonstrate some basic events here, which is zone.player, oops, uh, let's just make this a bit more clearer. So you can see local zone, let's just rename this to be zone module so we can easily separate it from our zone module here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say zone.player.player .player .player entered like this, colon connect function, and then we're gonna say player. And then in here, we're just going to say print. And then in here, what we're going to do is we're just going to say player.name. So this is a player object. And then in here, let's just say entered the uh, bullet. Let's just uh, say entered the box here for the print statement. And then we can duplicate this and change this to player exited. And you can view all of the events in the documentation. And now that we have this ready, let's open up the output here and give it a whirl. So let's click on play and we should load on in here. Now that we have this done, we're going to walk over to this here. And as you can see, it says cookie devx entered the box. 
and then you can see Cookie DevX left the box. Now the great thing about this is we don't have to deal with the annoying debounce or the checking of the player that you typically have to do with the touched event, which is what makes this so useful compared to just simply using the touched event. Now sometimes we don't always want to detect, sometimes we just want to get a list of all the people that are touching a part. And also Zone Plus introduces such a simple way to do this. So we can just say print and then zone colon get players and this is just going to return a list of all the players that are touching the part so let's test this and oops just before we get started i missed something here let's just wait 10 even though you typically wouldn't do it like this i'm just doing it for demonstration purposes and then if we click on play here it's going to load right on up and then what we need to do is wait 10 seconds so one uh, two three four i'm gonna enter the part here six and as you can see, sorry, I did not count those 10 seconds. It returns a list or an array with all of the players inside of the part, which is also super epic. Now, like I mentioned before, we can also use this on the client. So as well as having to avoid checking like if it's a humanoid, like you'd have to do with the normal touched event, we can almost copy the code from script and just create a local script in started UI for the sake of it. We can also just use a simple event called zone dot and then basically zone plus splits items into three categories so local player players and parts and we just did parts by doing zone dot players entered or whatever it was however if we just want to do this for the local player what we can do is we can simply say local player entered connect function player and then we can say print player dot name and then we can just concatenate this, entered the box, and now this will only be fired when the local player, so that is the player who is playing the game, will enter the box. So if anybody else enters that box and it's not them, that event will not be ran. So as you can see, I go up here and it's going to print and we can also use local player exited. So same concept there. So this covers the basics of zone plus now there is so much you can do with this module so i'd really recommend taking a look at the documentation if you want to see if it can adjust or be used in your case i hope this video helps you a lot if you've noticed the videos have been getting a little bit shorter it's because i pre-recorded these all on a sunday and i wanted them all to be released because once again i'm in my exams by the time you're seeing this video so i've had no time to record for like the past two months so thank you for tuning in hopefully these scheduled videos have been okay that's all for me once again if you want to join the cookie tech community there is a discord link down below and of course the forms which is the forms of the cookie.dev thank you for tuning in that's all from me and bye bye